Gary, Gary the ghost. I wish they were all that size. Yeah, biggest today that one, by far. Well, good morning everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is a brand new competition for 2024. I'm here at Lindome Lakes and that's because this is where the first round of the first ever on the fly TV feeder championships is actually going to take place. It's a four round competition. There are two rounds here at Lindome. There's another one at Hallcroft and there is also one at Boston Lakes. There's been a real change in the weather. As you can see, it's, uh, we've had some heavy rain this morning. We're going to be fishing on two lakes today or we could or I could potentially draw on one of two lakes. We've got Bonsai Lake here and the one behind the pub over there is Laurels. So we think there are about 30 odd anglers fishing this. We're expecting this competition to grow over the next couple of years but it is the first year of this competition but with 30 odd anglers it's certainly worth uh, taking part. Because there's only 30 odd anglers, we've got two lakes. I'm guessing that we're gonna have quite a bit of space wherever we draw today, that's what we're hoping. I haven't fished here since the Winter League. Thoroughly enjoyed that league here. But as the name suggests, this competition is feeder only. I haven't got a clue how I'm gonna be fishing it yet. I really don't know. Obviously there's gonna be some method feeder fishing involved. Other than that, I'm not really quite sure because when I fished here before, you've been able to fish with a bomb, you've been able to lose feed. That's not even the, in the equation for this competition. So I'm going to head inside now, get out of the rain, get some breakfast with Dad. We're drawing at 10 o'clock and we're actually fishing 12 until 5. Morning, boys. Morning, 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 morning. <coughs> and a cupcake from Tony. <laughs> It's not very often I get a chance for a full English breakfast, so when I come here I always try and make sure I get one and uh, that was really enjoyable, I enjoyed that. There's wind hitting it over on here, this is probably uh, a little bit less familiar to some of you, this is Laurels Lake. I've got a feeling we're going to have loads of room on here today, there's loads of different islands on this lake as well, every peg really looks attractive. But as you can see there's a bit of a breeze on it now, a bit of a wind blowing down into this corner. I haven't really got any sort of preference which lake I'm on to be fair. And I haven't really decided how I'm going to fish it because every peg, as you can see with islands like that, every peg's slightly different so you can't really make your, um, make your plan before you've drawn because you don't really know what you're going to be faced with. So we're going to head inside now, I think there's 32 anglers fishing, so let's go and get in the draw queue. <laughs> right then lads, obviously the first round today of the year. Uh, New uh, feeder champ, absolutely, I'm made up for it. I've got to give it to Alex, it's Alex's idea. But obviously, it's the on the flyer TV feeder champs here at the first round, Lindo. Four rounds, we're going to Lindo, Oldcroft, Boston, and straight back here for the final round. So, this year, 32 of you on it. Would have liked a few more, but I think it's a great start for the first year. Some great money to be fished for. Obviously, Lindo will put some of the peg feeds back in, which is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so, more money in the box. Um, I think it's going to be fantastic. So as you know, it's feeder only. I had a couple of questions pinged across to me last night. So let me tell you what's not allowed. You're not allowed bomb in any description on any of the rounds. It's no feeding with a catapult at all. You can use a bait up feeder, but it's got to be free running, hasn't it? Everything's got to be free running. Um, so somebody messaged me last night asking if they could fish the pole method. No, you cannot. I won't say who it was, but you can't do that. Jamie, <laughs> morning, mate. Are you feeling up for it? Too early. You're going too early. You reckon? Yeah. Next. Check out my hand out now. Yeah. I'm in. I can't. I'm in. I'm in. Strap in. 14 what about laurels. Any out? So, laurels 14. I've got a feeling it might be close to where I was on the three day here back in about October last year. So, this is laurels. That wind's still coming in that same direction. I think I'm going up towards that top corner. I think. Let me just have a quick look at these peg numbers. Because what I'm going to do is. That one's peg eight, that one. Number eight. Yeah, yeah, so you're on there, yeah. So that's peg eight, I'm peg 14 up this bank. It might be nearer for me to park at that far end, but I'm not going to, because I've got Dad with me today, so if I can leave the van at this bottom end, it's closer to the uh, closer to the, to the cafe and the toilets and all that sort of business. So I'm just gonna get the barrel loaded up. It's really nice and mild now. That rain stopped just about. So I'm gonna get up there, get to have a look what sort of features I've got. I think I have got an island um, to fish to. 
and then obviously I'll find out how close other anglers are to me and stuff, which can make a massive difference on this sort of a venue. So I'm going to get the barrel loaded up and I'll see you up at the peg. Great thing about these matches is you can really cut down on the kit if you want, you know, you could really fish a league like this with just one rod if you wanted. I'm going to be putting two or three up, but it's great how you can cut down, just like I uh, shared with you about the bomb and feeder leagues through the winter. Uh, it just makes all your prep and everything so much easier. Have you got 14. I'm neighbour to you on the other side, I'm 17. 14, there we go. You see that? Well, I like the look of that, I'll be honest. On well, the middle of the bank, as you can see, virtually, I've got an island to my right. Now the next angler there, I think, is uh, Vinny. So that looks like that's the next angler, which is ideal because it means that all this this uh, back side of this island here uh, is my water. I've obviously got a point there. I can't go to that point, but I've got a point there that I can go around. I've got open water. I'm hoping I've got a nice long margin. I'm assuming there won't be anybody on 13. And what can often be the case is the back edge of that island, I believe, is mine as well. I think that's what it was in the Winter League, even though it's... Over halfway, the other angler can't actually reach that. But that's something I do need to check. So yeah, that looks really nice, doesn't it? Bit of a breeze blowing in at the moment. So I'm gonna get set up, and I'll uh, while I'm setting up, I'll just be thinking about how I'm uh, how I'm gonna tackle it. I can't believe how much room we've got. I was hoping to have this much room, and it's literally just gonna be like pleasure fishing, which is, you know, it's great when you've got fisheries like this that can free up whole lakes for smaller numbers. You know, it gives you loads of room. I've got Mark Miller here. He's to my left, and he's the only angler going down into this corner. There's myself here, middle of the bank, and then we've got Vinny, and then there's two more anglers down there. So we're really well spaced out. It's uh, it's the kind of peg where, if you saw the last day of the three day of what I filmed on here, when I was up in that corner back in about October time, I've got some, pretty much a similar situation here in the sense that I've got loads and loads of options, you know, and sometimes you can have too many options. So I've got to make a decision. So what I'm going to do is, I'll flick the camera around. Um, I'll show you the kit and everything, because I know a lot of you will be interested to see some of the setups and stuff that I've got. I've got the bait brolly up at the moment, that's because it's still raining, but I really want to take that down when we start fishing, because obviously it blocks a lot out from the camera, because um, I obviously want you to see what's happening. But what I've basically got is, I've obviously got this island here that goes into a bit of a little bit of a bay. You've got the overhanging tree there. I can go as far as this, this platform really to my left in line with that. So I've got all the back of that island. I've got the point of the island as well. But what I've also got, as well as all this open water here, is I, I have actually got a cast to the back of that island. Nobody else can reach that spot. That's my spot. So I, I can actually uh, fish there. So that's obviously a target area that I'm going to be targeting. I've got all this open water and then I've got this, what looks a better margin to my left than the right. The right could be good. Obviously that's going into, it's a little bit hemmed in a little, little bit behind the island. So I'm not quite as confident at that side as what I am going to the left. So that is obviously an area I'm going to target a little bit later on. So my approach, what I'm basically going to do is, I made my mind up, I'm actually going to start to this point just here. And what, But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just there but I'm going to start there with an 11 foot commercial. Now I'll explain why I'm doing this. So I've got an 11 foot commercial set up there. That is for reaching that island over there, which is exactly, depending on where I hit my clip, it's about 36, me 36 meters. So I'm going to fish with this rod, which is clipped up at 36 meters, but I'm going to fish it to the point of that island there. I can just obviously guesstimate that. I don't want to fish clipped up there. And what that's going to enable me to do is obviously fish that area and hopefully catch fish there. But it means at any stage, if I want to suddenly fill the feeder up, and whack a feeder full of bait out there behind the island to, to keep it topped up, keep it primed, then I can do that with the same rod really nice and quickly and easily. All right, so that's where I'm gonna to start, towards that point there. I've also got a cast to the back of the island, as and when I need it. But what I have also got set up is, this is for fishing shorter range, it's an XRC, nine foot, new uh, HX Pro reel, again with a little open method feeder, and that is really one that I can use anyway. It's only nine foot, so it's gonna be ideal for fishing there anywhere around the back of this island and if I want to drop this down the margins later on. So that is a rod that, you know, it's suitable for everywhere really, but the reason for the 11 foot one is obviously because that longer line behind the island is 36 meters. I've got another one set up here, another nine foot. That's with a, an XR reel, that one. And that's actually got 
if you could just see it it's actually got a free running feeder rig on it and that is because when I was here last time I actually caught some fish on liquidized corn so that's liquidized corn that is mixed with salted caramel ground bait which just stiffens up the liquidized corn and that's gone a little bit stiffer than I wanted now so I can add a bit more liquid ice to it so it just holds in the feeder so that is it for the, the uh, rod setup the fourth rod there is basically a feeding rod that's a feeding rod where I can obviously prime any sort of margins with a bigger bait up feeder still got an hour before the start just come down to the bottom end of the lake that wind's obviously blowing down into into our bank and this is where you're actually looking right up the lake we've actually got the edge boys here today Rob one Lee Kerry. There he is. How are you, mate? If you're into your subscription channels with the in-depth stuff, check out the edge with these boys. Yeah, that's what nice. we're doing today, a live yeah. match. You're all, you're on the box. I'm on the box. Lee's <laughs> coaching. Coach today. You're coaching. Coach yeah. slope bank uh, slash bank runner. Yeah, yeah. I'll is do this... an hour with Rob. Yeah. Two with you. <laughs> two with Joe Jagger. All oh, right. Whoever's, okay. Whoever's the highest bid off, yeah. he's, he's there. No. Oh, whoever's so... doing the best, I'm going to come round. Just a mercenary. Yeah, so yeah. it's not down to popularity or whoever you like someone. It's just whoever the highest bidder is. That's literally. No, no, not highest bidder. I want the glory. Oh, do, right, so got you. Where you drink? All right. I am there where the bait rolly is. Oh, okay. Very Happy? nice. Uh, yeah. There's loads of room, isn't there? There's loads of room. I've got two islands. I could chuck to the back of that one as well. So how about you? Do you fancy this? this? One here? I could chuck to the back of that one. Hey, stay out of my peg. <laughs> well, he's chuck it to that as well. Yeah, I know. Quite often not. Do you fancy this? I think so, mate. Yeah. Well, the rain's back again. It is forecast to stop about one o'clock, I think. So hopefully we're going to be able to take all these layers off in a bit. Um, I'm all set now. I'm going to take take that brolly down in a moment. There's fish topping everywhere, all the way around the lake. Um, still having a little bit of a dilemma where to put my margin line. I'll be honest. I was going to put that corn line down here, down to the left. Um, I know Mark's going to fish down that side, or I could obviously go to my right. The more I look at the right, I think that's looking a little bit more favourable. So I think I'm going to feed my corn line just there, about three or four metres off, um, off that, off that platform. There's still fish. See fish moving in the middle there. There's plenty of fish cruising around. So I'm going to start on the method. I'm going to start to that point there. I think but I'm not going to stay there too long. I can keep that line topped up. And then obviously I've got that uh, that island to cast to out there. So we're just about there. So I'm going to kick off with a nice uh, mini band and wafter. I've got them there lined up. We'll kick off on one of those, probably a yellow one, just because that's what I'm more confident with, with that color. And like I say, I've done my best to film it for you. We're getting rain on the lens now, as you can see. So uh, hopefully this is going to clear up in a little while. So while I've been sat here, just kind of deciding on how I'm actually going to uh, going to start and everything, I'm definitely going to I'm going to start to the point of that island there. I'm going to leave that one alone for now, <clears throat> but I'm going to feed with a, a bait up feeder down to my right. I'm going to go in line with, with that platform there, but in line with that big tree. I'm going to feed that quite positive with uh, with corn to start with well i think that's all i'm going to stick with stick with the corn and the, the uh, liquidized corn um i can scoop the a feeder full of the corn um i've got two more tins in my bag if i need it there's two tins there um and i've got some that mix there is the salted caramel ground bait with the salted caramel um liquidized corn uh, you cut it doesn't come liquidized it just comes in a can it's whole corn but I've actually, i'll put it through a, a liquidizer and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep topping that line up. Good luck, lads. I'm going to keep topping that line up, this this short line. So quite a bit of corn there, as you can see. I'm just going to cap that off. The consistency of this should just hold. And I can obviously put that in a, in a feeder when I decide to go on it to fish it. I'm going to feed that just there. See where that is in line. With, uh, with that platform when I do go on that I'm not going to go I'm not going to be clipped up on it and it catch really well on corn through winter on here feeding it quite positive so but like I say I was here a few days ago and I caught on this method on here obviously that, that wasn't in a match but it's just worth a try it's a bit of a throwaway that's it Give that a second to empty, and this is a dedicated feeding rod, feeding setup, where I can just keep putting 
a feeder full in on that line throughout the day. Put that on there. Then I'm going to kick off with this. I've got a yellow micro band and wafter on. Size 14 hook. I'm not clipped up on this line. I've got the drag undone. But when I say I'm not clipped up, this rod is actually clipped up, but it's clipped up for that island out there in front of me at 36 metres. So I'm just going to kick off there and just feel our way into it, see what happens. I'm sure it drags undone now whilst I'm on that. And that's it. The biggest difference for me is that obviously when I fish here, it's normally in winter, and it's the bomb and feeder league. Obviously this is feeder only, but the difference is we can't lose feed anything today. This is feeder only. So the hardest thing is going to be trying not to lose feed anything. I haven't got any catapults out, so that's going to help. But even in winter, you know, I often ca catch on areas where you feed small balls of micro pellets, what you can keep loose feeding by hand. See there's fish top in there, back of, look at that one, back of the island there. And again, look, that's right over by my feeder, that one. So there's fish moving everywhere, all the way around. So I'm going to have probably three or four casts on this spot. See if we can catch any, anything there. And then my next move will be to the back of that island if I need to. Where I'm pretty confident, you know, I will catch there. Just had a little indications there. I think we're going to be getting one or two liners as well. You know, is that many fish moving around? It is mild, even though I've got all this on. It is mild. So I'm going to give this probably three or four casts, something like that. And then um, if I don't catch there, I'm going to move out to the island. Well, I've had three casts now. Interestingly, the first two were about two meters off that actual island. And I never had a single indication, nothing at all. I've just gone about a meter off that island now, which seen slightly shallower water and I am getting the odd little indication I don't know if they're fish milling around around the feeder or whether it's the odd fish moving about in this open water but whatever whatever the reason um, it hasn't materialized into a fish so that's it now I'm gonna um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna I'm gonna have my first cast to that island now I don't want to spend too long on that without catching is that many fish about <clears throat> I really felt I would have caught a fish quite early on on that if there'd been any there perhaps there's none there at the minute so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave exactly the same feeder on again it's this 20 gram into size open method feeder yellow yellow uh, wafter on there and I'm going to have a first cast to the back of that island where I mean there's more there's more ripple hitting it over there and I have seen fish moving out there whilst I was setting up let's just see if we can pick one up from there I didn't really want to be going out there as quick as this to be honest I was rather hoping we could have caught one or two there before we moved but I'm obviously very conscious about the time as well so I've gone out there sooner than I really wanted and I've seen quite a few fish moving in that open water as well, halfway, which is obviously something that I can do. I expect to get one or two liners on this. I mean, there's 36 metres of line out there. And there's fish moving around in the middle, up in the water. So I'm expecting one or two liners, but obviously it'd be nice to get a couple of fish in the net. I'm pretty confident that anywhere at the back of that island, obviously I can go slightly to the left, slightly to the right, chasing them around a little bit like we do in winter as well, but I know that works on here in summer. So I'm going to be quite confident that I can give this more time on that line. I mean, there's a bit more ripple hitting it out there. There's definitely more fish moving out there. So I'm going to have a few casts in that spot now. And then at intervals, every 20 minutes, every hour, 20, 30 minutes, I'm going to feed this corn line to my right with the bait up rod. Well, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but we've been fishing 40 minutes. And this is my first bite. I cannot believe it. I've only seen one fish caught, and that's Mark on my left. He's a carp that looks about four pound. That's the only fish I've seen caught in that period. I just cannot believe it's taken so long to get a, a fish. I've been dropping it in one or two different spots along that where that island is. 
but I've literally just worked my way around to the left and um, I had a liner on my first cast to the left of the island and then uh, I had a couple of indications on this and then it, the tip's just flown round and we've hooked one but I can't, just can't believe how slow it is at the minute so we're off the mark anyway still I mean the fish is so warm I can't believe it you know when you suddenly touch touch a fish and you realize how warm it is but there we go we're off the mark it looks I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna get more signs on that spot there just to the left to the left of that island but what one thing I have been doing is that was just on a on a, a yellow one of the yellow ones what I have um, what I have done over the last 20 minutes is every now and then every every few casts I've just been loading the feeder up in fact I'll do it now I'll show you just getting some of the pellets just lightly pressing them onto the method feeder like that roughly and what I've been doing is simply just casting that to my first swim and just emptying the feeder there so I'm actually keeping it keeping it topped up with a few pellets obviously we can't feed by hand so that's hopefully keeping that line kind of alive that obviously I can drop onto at any stage knowing that there's a few pellets there it's been nice to just start putting a few fish in the net especially with it being so such a long time into the match Just see what happens obviously the more casts i have out there the more bait i've actually got going out there and you know they might respond to that feed you know if they are cruising about they might want to feed over food if that makes sense you know in winter when you're on here and sometimes on these f1 venues you're just kind of dotting about with a little feed and moving around but we'll find out obviously the more casts i have there the more feed will go in on that spot so but at the minute there's nobody running away with it on this lake not that I can see anyway there's only more I've only seen that one fish caught to my left so looks like it's slow for everyone at this stage and on the uh, 30 minute 30 minute mark I actually topped up with another large bait up feeder of corn to my right so I'll be doing that every 30 minutes putting a, a good helping of corn in on that line just staying quite positive on that well I honestly thought I was going to get another fish on that second second cast after the fish and I I just didn't didn't get a single sign I'm amazed how slow it is I've just seen Vinny on my right catch a fish and I've just seen Rob Button down on peg two catch a fish so I've just had another cast further around to the left again up to the island it was much further to the left and um, that's only been there only been there two minutes and I've just had a really slow pull round that's a just a small F1. I'm amazed how slow it is. I just can't can't believe how slow it is. But we'll keep going, keep them lines alive. Just gotta feed feed my corn line. It's the 30 minute stage again. Keep this line alive. This really is a little bit of a a throwaway line to be fair but it's one of those lines that if it does kick in it, uh, it could be brilliant I'm gonna put one in at this stage don't want to go too mad with it there we go that's it keeps that alive for now let's get back out towards that island now get back on track just loading that same size feeder again reclipped up again I'm just gonna go slightly to the left for some reason it seems better well it's the only place I've really caught well we are 90 minutes in I've had three casts over to the island and I haven't had a single indication not even a liner or anything Vinny on my right I'm sure he's playing another fish 
I'm not quite sure where he's catching or anything, but other than that, I've not seen anybody catch anything. I've seen the odd fish moving through the middle. Obviously shallow. So all I've just all I've just done is I've just had a cast in the middle. You see where the wind's hitting it. See one or two better fish moving there, but I've just dropped this right in the middle, halfway between myself and the uh, and the island, unclipped. And this has been out there for four minutes, and without any sort of warnings, no liners, nothing. It's it just had a a pull, and um, it's a, a better stamp fish. I'm just amazed that it's fishing so hard and it's so easy to, to start trying to chase it. I'm trying not to do that, but I'm also aware that I think we should be catching more than what we are. But I'm keeping the other two lines alive. I keep putting some pellets towards the point of that island and my corn line. I was just thinking of trying the corn line, to be fair. It might be worth having a drop on it. I'm going to have another cast in the middle. Obviously, I've got to do that. <clears throat> you know, because there might be one or two fish milling about down there. And then I might be having a look on that corn line a little bit earlier than, than I'd uh, anticipated. So, have you fished that one? It's still only fish number three. After 90 minutes. Be steady away Just keep trying to put fish in the net and then if we are going to get any sort of a, a late run then uh, you know you, you're trying to make sure that you're not not too far behind you know if you've kept on trying to put one or two fish in the net still not sure what to do with this margin business yet I'll be honest I've got the corn line fed to the right but it's not really down the margin as such but I've got all this left hand left hand side here to do something with but that's something I'll think about later on I'll just see how the match how the match pans out over the next hour or two so again I'm just going to go back into the middle try and make a bit of noise that's it Let's see if we can get another one from there well this is my second cast into, into the middle since I caught that fish there and I'm getting the odd the odd little indication but you know there are so many fish cruising about on the top up in the water they could be liners they could be anywhere between here and where the feeder is i was just considering topping up my uh, the corn line to the right but i think because it's fishing so hard vinnie on my right's got three fish now mark's just got the one i think rather than just top it up blindly because it is fishing as hard as it is I think I'm gonna have a look on it I didn't expect going on that, that line as soon as this and it is a bit of a throwaway line anyway and even if I don't catch on it now I'm still gonna keep it topped up so I'm gonna have a look on it you never know you never know in this game do we <clears throat> so I'll just switch that rod for the free running cage there we go I'm just gonna make sure that that drags undone no I'm gonna do is just fish with them um, a single grain of corn just to see if there's anything there that's just on a on a hair rig as you can see there just gonna hook it that way there we go with a speed stop single grain of corn and all I'm gonna do is just put a couple of grains of corn in in that mix there as you can see just a little pinch of that mix there we go. Let's just have a look on it, see if there's anything there. Like I said, I didn't expect going on this so soon, and it is a bit of a, a throwaway line anyway. If we don't catch, well, we've tried it. I can just keep, keep on topping it up if need be. If we can't catch on it, obviously if I catch on it, <laughs> I'll stay on it. There we go. I've seen a couple of fish moving up these margins as well, you know, there's obviously a lot of fish moving about <clears throat> even though it's as coloured as what it is 
Uh, there are lots of fish milling about. They might be getting in mood for spawning. We don't know, we're always speculating at this game, aren't we? So I'm just gonna give this five minutes, see if we get any sort of liners, any indications, any sort of signs of encouragement to stay on it. If not, I'll uh, just, just top it up again and then go back out on the method feeder. Probably have a go back to that point again, see if there's any fish there. Well, we're just about at the halfway stage and another fish rise, <laughs> splashing there. I just can't believe how hard it is. It's absolutely rock hard. We're just approaching the halfway stage now and I've literally got three fish. Uh, Vinny at the next peg, he's got three. Mark on my left, I think he's got two now. My biggest concern at the minute, well, there's a couple of concerns. One is the three that I've got are quite small. And the other thing as well is I don't really know, I can't really seem to think where a run of fish is gonna come from. I've got that corn line fed positive here to my right. Obviously I'm hoping that's gonna kick in, but if that doesn't, then I don't really know. I can't really think about where a run of fish is gonna come from. I've got this left hand margin and uh, I'm gonna consider putting, um, just putting the odd feeder full of, method feeder full of some micros down, down, down here to the left where I've got a bit of space. But I don't really, I just don't know where a run of fish is gonna come from unless something, unless they just switch on. I've spent a bit of time in the middle. There's still one or two fish moving in that middle. But at the moment, I'm back across towards that island now, over to the left where I've had more indications there. And um, I'm getting the odd indication, but there could be fish. I mean, another fish just moving there in the middle. I think if I don't catch on this cast, I'm just gonna spend a bit of time in that middle. It's. Um, just a bit concerned that obviously there's still second half of the match to go yet. I'm amazed just how hard it's still fishing. There just isn't any sign of it getting better. It's um, it's unbelievable. I think uh, over the last half hour or so I have kind of not really chased it. I've just kind of pushed it a little bit. As much as I think we should be catching. Look at that one there. As, as much as I think. That swam towards me. That must have swam towards me. That. Um, as much as I think we should be catching more than what we are, it's just fishing so so difficult. Mark on my left now has got four fish. Vinny on my right's got three. I've got three, and I've literally just hardly had a sign for the last half hour, forty minutes. I've tried setting up a line down this left hand margin. There's just small fish there. I spent more time on the point of that island where that fish has just rose and I just haven't had a fish there, I haven't had a bite. So I've literally just set myself a little bit of a mini goal to just have about 10 casts to the back of that island out there, clipped up. So obviously I'm hitting the same spot and just see if that sticking to one spot for 10 casts or so is going to make a difference. Um, I've set the stopwatch as well, so I'm going to time myself and just have three and four minute casts. And I've literally just gone out there, and this has been out there, it's been out there a minute and a half, and it's gone round. That's first cast back out there. So whether it's just this is going to be a first cast thing, or whether there are some fish out there, but I'm just really, really concerned that I can't really think or imagine where a run of fish is going to come from my inside corn line i've tried it two or three times now um down to to the right down here and there just isn't any sign of encouragement on that line obviously if that kicks in then great but if it doesn't that's what i'm concerned about about where any sort of late fish are going to come from so i'm just hoping i can just find a spot where I can get a run of fish from. Like I say, I mean, it is fishing hard all over this lake from what we know. And I keep talking about having a run of fish, but that's because I'm so, so confident that it's not gonna stay as hard as this. You know, I'm so sure and confident that you're still gonna need a decent weight on here. And so that means, if that is the case, which I think it is, 
you're going to need a run of fish from somewhere you know you're going to need to catch more than what i'm catching now i mean that's i've only had four fish now so just going to go back to that spot again obviously as you'd expect it's a little bit tighter to the island and just see if i can get a run of fish from somewhere but i'm just going to stick on that spot now and use a stopwatch there we go, set the stopwatch and I'm going to keep that going and just have three and four minute casts have, a, have ten of them out there just to see if that constant bait going in one spot out there is just going to get me a couple of fish but there's fish rising everywhere they're rolling, the backs are coming out, they're cruising about if we could lose feed it would be a completely different ball game but that's where we're at at the minute so I'm going to have at least 10 casts on this spot now and hopefully see if I just pick off a few a few more fish but it's um, just going to keep trying to pick off odd fish so I'm not falling too far behind well I've just gone on to like say on to these time casts now four minute casts that nearly pulled the rod in it's a skimmer <laughs> well that, that's just come on just under three minutes so so in three casts that's two fish so that's obviously better than it was I'm just hoping that this is going to give me a bit of a run of fish just sticking to four minute casts across there just still got a yellow as you can see mini uh, mini wafter on just uh, not too tight to the island but tighter than I was if I'd missed that if there wasn't anything there or I lost it I would have said it was a, a carp that the way it pulled the rod in it was unbelievable unbelievable bite that such a small fish <coughs> let's reset that stopwatch there we go so like I say I'm going to give myself 10 casts doing this just to see what happens obviously I'm keeping my eye out what's happening around me um, that's uh, five fish, can't really, I'm not even going to count that skimmer, keep staying on four. I'd love to catch like this because you're a bit more active, you, you feel as though you're making something happen by putting some bait in. The feeder's going in regular as well, so if them fish are, well they are up in the water, we can see them cruising around. Sometimes the frequent casting can just help to draw fish down, you know, if it's, if it's suddenly, that went then, I just turned away. Um, you feel as though you might be able to, you know, if one's just passing and it suddenly sees the feeder there, it can follow it down. And that tends to be stuff what we do in deeper water. I mean, this isn't that deep. It's only that deep where I'm fishing out there. But when the fish are up in the water, you know, you're just trying anything, just trying to draw them down to the bottom if, the, if that's where they don't really want to naturally be. Don't, it looks like Vinny's just playing the fish by the looks of it. Yeah, he is. Vinny's got another one. So we might be seeing signs of it picking up a little bit but we are fishing till five o'clock which could make a huge difference to normal match times fishing that extra hour so this has been in three minutes and this and this is the sixth the sixth four minute cast gary gary the ghost I wish they were all that size. Yeah, biggest today that one, by far. Oh, we've got to be conservative, haven't we? I'm going to, I'm going to say five for that. Yeah, go on, Alex. Your ex, you know every fish in here, mate. What? Six or seven. Good. I hope you're weighing me in, then, Alex. Thanks for that, mate. Thank you. Cheers, lad. See you later. See you later. Pardon? Uh, yeah, mini wafter. Well, that's the biggest fish so far. Uh, that's Gary from On The Fly TV and Alex Doherty who's filming. And look what I've just noticed. I'm not going to say what pattern of hook this is. Not the Matrix ones, because all ours are discontinued. Look at that. Now, I haven't bullied that fish in any way, but that has actually opened the hook out, which is very, very, concerning 
that's a pattern of hook that I've only been using for um, for a few sessions now just to see what it was like and that's not really filled me with confidence in its strength yeah that's a little bit but we landed the fish that's the main thing it's definitely something I need to uh, think about that because I didn't really bully that fish in any way really so are the faster casts the answer well we've got three fish from doing it so I've obviously got to continue with that haven't I so I'm going to go back out there and um, stick to the four minute the four minute formula for now and just keep trying to put anything in the net what I am going to do I'm just going to feed that again a ball of pellets as you can see just a mound of pellets like that and all I'm going to do is just under on that there empty that and just keep that keep that topped up there do that once more so there's a few pellets just so I have got an edge to my left fed with some pellets in still keeping the corn going in on that right hand side but like I say I haven't got I've got to admit I haven't got loads and loads of confidence in uh, in that one now at the minute because I haven't caught on it yet I keep trying it but I'm going to keep it going keep it topped up to get this back out there feels so much better when you can if you cast into the same spot you feel like you're building up a swim sort of thing where you're trying to make something happen rather than just dotting it about so that was proper fish number five well I've just had a chat with Vinny at the next peg he's um, he sent his cleats about 26 tw 27 pounds something like that I think he's got about the same number of fish but he's definitely caught a much better stamp than me literally just been as you know I've been concerned about this last uh, last period about you know where I'm going to be to try and catch some fish late on what I decided to do about 20 minutes ago half an hour ago maybe 20 minutes half an hour I fed the line straight in front of me at about six meters with pellets my just fed it with my um, with my uh, method feeder the open method feeder I just mounded loads of pellets on there and just fed it and with that bit of a ripple on, I've seen odd fish moving about. I just felt that I felt quite confident in just dropping on it and hopefully trying it later on. But we've got we've got 90 minutes left, and I've just switched rods and just had my first drop in on that new line. And this has been out there; it's been there two and a half minutes, and uh, and I've hooked one, and it feels like a good fish as well. So I've just been told by Vinny that um, the, actual, the actual section split is where you're actually fishing against the anglers at your end of the lake. So I'm fishing against everybody to my left and around and opposite. Vinny's the first peg in that section to the right, so he's fishing against everyone to his right and opposite. But I can't really think about that for now, I've just got to try and catch as much as I possibly can. So he's 90 minutes left and if I can get some better stamped fish that's really going to help. If I'm not going to get the numbers, then obviously I've got to hope to get the quality if I can. The interesting thing is that whenever I've noticed a fish close in, I haven't seen many to be fair. Vinny says he's seen one or two under his rods cruising past big ghosties and stuff. But when I have seen one just break the surface or whatever within, you know, eight metres of the bank, it, they have been good fish. And this is a big fish so uh, that's encouraging that's really encouraging that's a brilliant fish to get that one Really, really, really pleased to get that one, especially on that line as well. Still, mate. Brilliant. 
as it goes to set up on that line it's exactly the same it is a different rod but the setup is the same it's uh, eight pound eight pound horizon main line no shock leaders or anything and uh, size 14 hook got a bayonet on there and that was on a, a mini wafter again not sure whether to put something in on that line now or whether I just go back in on it I think I'm gonna put something in on it I think just for confidence what I'm doing just mounding very loosely a few pellets there as you can see I actually fed it with my 11 foot rod so that was a little bit further out I've just got a few pellets in there and what I'm going to do now is just give that five minutes I'm just going to have a five minute cast five minute cast over to the to the back of the island see if I can pick a quick fish up just while that inside line gets five minutes to just kind of Reset if you want to call it that. Get this back out there. Be nice to pick one up out there while that short line just gets reset for another fish. That was a big fish then. Set that stopwatch. Great to get one on this now, but come on now, we need a good finish now. I've just dropped back that. That looks like there's one on. Oh, it's pulled off. I was just about to bring that in. I just said I was going to have a five minute cast on this out there, and that was, it twitched a couple of times, then it dropped back. Sometimes the skimmer bites are like that. Look, when I picked into it, the hook never really went in. It could have been a fish that was just caught up on the line, maybe, but. So that was it, I've had my cast on that. I'm gonna go back onto this short line that's had five minutes after me feeding it. The interesting thing was on this line when I was on it, on, well I've only had one cast on it, was when, again just with a little mini here, uh, or micro, should I say, micro wafter. There wasn't any indications before the bite, it was just a, a really positive pull. So let's get this out there, let's see if we can uh, get another decent fish. Make sure that drags all right. That's it, all set. We'll set the stopwatch just so we know how long it's been in. And that is it. So we are. It's actually quarter to four. Most matches obviously would finish around four o'clock. So to get this extra hour, you think that really it's really gonna help the fishing. Certainly on a short line, so that's what I'm hoping is gonna happen. Well, this has been out there five and a half minutes. This is that first cast. Having set, set it up and having a five minute chuck to the island. So it's been there five and a half minutes. I'm getting an odd little pluck, really telling me, or getting me to believe that there were small fish there, small skimmers or roach. And then all of a sudden, the tip's just flown round, 100 miles an hour. <clears throat> we're into another net fish. It's really encouraging to have caught two fish on this line now. When there's over an hour, over an hour to go. And obviously the time of day you'd expect it to be better for, for a short line to produce fish. So if nothing else, it's certainly helping the get confidence levels let's get that one that's one for the uh, middle net that's it got our wafter bike which will speed things up a little bit but what I'm going to do this time is I'm not going to set it up like I did last time I'm going to um, just go straight back in on it don't know what's best I've no idea but that's what I'm going to do I might get a quicker fish if it's going to be a case of catching as many as we possibly can it sounds like this section's still fishing hard so every single fish is going to be important so again as you can see, just see exactly the same method for you that I was using across at the island 
then just underarming it gently and quietly just there make sure that drags undone and super fast bites get that in place set the stopwatch again that's it so that's fish number seven feels like it's starting to improve but this competition is all about section points it's not a weight competition look at that that was a liner there straight away this competition is is um it's all on section points over the four uh, four rounds so obviously you know you want to try and avoid a blowout the best you can at any stage it's not like a weight competition where you can hope to catch catch up later on in the league it's not like that but another liner there and they're slow liners them they're not like the, the roach or skimmer rattles that you sometimes get that's really encouraging that a little bit of a ripple on here but it's not like it was that wind was coming more in earlier on it looks a lot more as though there was a lot more cover for the fish but that has obviously told us that there's still one or two down there even having just caught that one that uh, that f1 There we go, that looks like a little fish, let's have it. Oh, doesn't feel that, could be a bream this. Whatever it is, it's extra weight, it is, it's a bream. This thing is bigger than F1. Well, this line has been mega hasn't it already? It's a lovely fish, look at that one in the end one well we're into about the last three minutes or so I cannot believe that I haven't caught anything in that last 30 minutes Mark's just netting a very big fish which is uh, I think that's gonna be very important that fish I think it's gonna be uh, yeah that's gonna be an important fish for him that one I think it's um, I just haven't caught this last 30 minutes. This, this short line is just, ever since it started fizzing, it, it's just gone. It's not been the same. Had that one F1 on it. But what I, what I have literally done in the last 20 minutes, I, I've, I've had a couple of casts out there. I've set this line up, set the right and platform margin line up. Had a couple of casts over there as well, just to try and pick off a fish and rest a line and then go back on it and try and pick one off that way. It's not made any difference whatsoever. I can't believe that it hasn't picked up in some shape or form. It hasn't for me. I haven't really heard Vinny catching anymore in that last period. And Mark's just netted that big fish. And he's had, I think he's had two more fish. I don't know if they were skimmers or bream, but that was a, a big carp, that one. I don't really know how I'm doing in this section at all. I don't think it's gonna be enough for a section, you know, first or second or anything like that. I've just got a funny feeling that that, that last hour is gonna cost me, but. That's it, that's it. Well, I've got to admit, that was very, very disappointing that last hour or so. Up until then, I kind of felt all right. It was fishing hard, but it looked like it was fishing hard for everyone. But um, that last hour, that last hour, I've had way too many quiet spells. And I think the average stamp on my fish haven't been big enough. I don't know why that is whether it's a bait or something, I don't know. But that's what it is. I can't do anything about it now, can I? Yeah, definitely a bit mixed mixed emotions about it to be honest um got to be honest obviously with a competition like this where it's on points you can't drop any any results or anything like that every single round counts so and there are only four of them you don't really want to crash out on your first round and going into that last 90 minutes i felt i was pretty much in control you know i still couldn't see three of the anglers so i didn't know what they were catching but the rain keeps coming sorry i do apologize um, so to cut long story short, I've ended up weighing 32 pounds, which 
I never even tried to guess my weight, but I think that's a little bit more than what I thought I'd got. Obviously, a couple of those fish were a better stamp, but the stamp of fish has kind of let me down a little bit. Mark's done absolutely brilliant at the next peg. That late fish, what he had in the last few minutes, last five minutes, uh, he says it was nearly 15 pound, uh, and that's boosted his weight up to 40 pound. So he's done absolutely fantastic. And the section's actually been won by one of the anglers I couldn't see over there. I mean, that is a peg I fished. Uh, I think it's is it peg 40, I think it is. Directly behind that island, it's the M peg there. Uh, that's Joe, he's had 69 pound, I think he has. So he's won the section. Mark's ended up second with 40 pound. And my 32 pounds actually put me third um, in, in, in the section. So not a complete disaster. Obviously I would have preferred first or second, like I said earlier. Uh, but obviously, you know, if I go and get three section wins now, then, you know, I could frame at the end of the league. There's still a, a long way to go, but it's fished really, really hard. I think there's one angle behind the, the island there. He's only had single figure pounds. Uh, and Rob Wharton, who I thought had been catching a few, um, he's only weighed 21 pound. Uh, so obviously some of his fish have been smaller. Um, so there we go. Um, it's going to be an interesting league. I am filming the next three matches for you. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll put up a full result now for you, uh, just to let you know how Bonsai's fished, and just to let you know what the weights have been like up here as well, just so that if you do want to follow the competition, then you can follow it right the way through to the final round, which is actually here. So I think the next round could be Holcroft. I think it's Holcroft, then Boston, and then the last one is back here. So not a complete disaster, not the dream start that I wanted. And I've definitely done a, at least two things today that I wouldn't do again. You know, like the corn line, I wouldn't have done that. I would have probably utilized this open water somehow. Um, but, you know, I never imagined it was gonna fish as hard. So I'm gonna get some gear packed, rest of my gear packed away. Go and see dad, dad's in the van. We're gonna have some fish and chips on the way home. And um, I've got to be absolutely honest with you and say that, you know, if the next round is at Holcroft, I'm, I'm going to have to go and have a visit there. You know, I only really fish there in winter when it's Bloodworm and Joker fishing. This style of fishing is completely different at this time of year. So I am, if I'm going to take this serious, I'm going to have to go and have a visit, have a bit of a recce, just to try and give myself a bit of a uh, an idea of what to expect in that next round. So I um, hope you've enjoyed this insight into this live match. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. I'll put the full result up for you and I look forward to checking in with you for round two.